Hello, folks. Brandon Chapman with you today. It's, an, it's another edition of the Theo Knight video for August 16th, 2021. Uh, interesting day as the market, uh, at least the S&P and the Dow, achieved new all-time highs. As you look at the contracts here, we faded on the open, began to rally throughout the course of the day, and finished near the high of the session. And as you look at the, the periphery, right, what led the market today? Of course, you know, you got healthcare, you got utilities and staples, really marking the path, of course, healthcare. If you guys heard Fauci, he says, guys, put aside your freedom, get out there, get the jab. <laughs> Is that the catalyst? I have no idea, but maybe it didn't hurt. As you look at, uh, for example, the Dow Jones, uh, we'll, just, we'll just focus on the DIA here, but uh, the Dow Jones, for example, the DIA at new all-time highs as well, coming off our lows. Uh, the Qs, however, the NASDAQ 100 uh, did finish off a little bit. If you look at the NDX, the NASDAQ uh, index, well, basically flat on the session. QQQ, again, finishing flat on the session. So tech really kind of well, really kind of lagged the session today. As you know, staples, utilities, and healthcare really led the way for today's session. Uh, technology just slightly a little bit behind uh, for the day. So an interesting session. Um you know, when you think about the Dow components, for example, United Healthcare uh, surging, uh, finishing up almost two percent. Uh, one of the better performers, if we look at the S and P 100 here, uh, the only better performer was uh, Eli Lilly. Go figure, another healthcare stock, a pharmaceutical. We got Thermo Fisher in there, TMO breaking out of a little flag formation here. Uh, we've got Bristol Myers, uh, Duke Energy is in the mix, Abvi's with there as well. Come down to Merck. So at the end of the day, I mean, it was really healthcare-related stocks, namely pharmaceuticals, that really towed the hill and finished near the high of today's session. So, so again, very, very interesting. You know, it kind of came out of the blue to some degree, but the market's searching. I mean, a lot of these companies are down quite a bit. I mean, not necessarily Eli Lilly, but if, for example, you look at AbbVie. You know, AbbVie has been flat for the last several months. Um, you look at Bristol Myers Squibb, right? It's been flat for a couple of months. Uh, you look at Merck, Merck's been down, maybe breaking out or reversing. So as you look at some of these plays, maybe there is a little bit of a search for what is going to lead the market. But I'll tell you, if the market's achieving new highs and it's healthcare, utilities, and staples are your three top sectors, you kind of got, you know, there's a little bit of trouble there. As you look, financials down a quarter percent. We got cyclicals towards the bottom, uh, materials and energy. Now, <clears throat> as you look at energy, for example, we'll go to forward slash CL. Um, oil finished slightly lower in the session. Um, if you look at the product depth for oil, again, you'll notice we're down about 1.3%, 5%. We finished off the lows of the session. We got this key support at $65. As we look at the product depth here, and we're going to look at forward slash CL, um, what you'll notice what's happening to the structure. And this is something that's rather, un it's a big change. If you look at the first couple of contracts here, right? Uh, you see how price are rising and then we're starting to fall. If I show you the curves, we're going to add a curve. Oh, it's 2019. I was like, that didn't look right. Let's, <laughs> let's fast forward here. 2020. Let's get to the future here. So we're going to August 16th. I looked at it earlier today. That did not look the same, but I was like, maybe it, maybe it wilted towards the close here. We'll look at 8.9. We'll add a curve again for uh, um, 8.2. As you see kind of how things have transitioned a little bit. So while not going more normal, what you'll notice is where we were, for example, in August 2nd, not only have prices fallen, but if you look at the steepness or the slope of that curve, you'll notice things have flattened out a little bit. What that tells you is that you know that the, uh, the forward premium or, or the net cost of carry, that positiveness is starting to, to melt just a little bit. Um, we're somewhat similar to where we were in a week ago, but the point is some of the shine on oil is starting to come off. Now, it's not bearish. Uh, seeing a backwardation term structure like this is bullish as you're seeing falling prices as you go out in time. So it's not hard, it's kind of hard to be bearish on oil, but right now it may not be the best time to be bullish. We'll see if we can address 65 and hold it. If not, we're going to break down and fall to 60. However, there were a couple of bullish trades on some, uh, some of these names. Uh, Fang, for example, down 4% today. Certainly not a pretty day. Volume was above average. You know, and yet there were some, you know, there were some bigger trades. These are actual just rolls that occurred. So if you look at to option time and sales, you'll see some of these. You know, a Jan 2270, we got a Jan 23110, um, some of the bigger ones. But if you look at the Jan 2380, so if we go out here to Jan 23, we roll down here. 
what you'll notice, you got an 80, uh, 110, looks like a spread trade, right? For 2023, by the way, it's a ways out there. If we look at the, the GN22 around the 70, for example, you'll notice that that's 9,800 is less than 10,000. So closing out the GN22, rolling it to the GN23, probably as a long call vertical. So not exactly a hugely bullish trade, but it's, it's not bearish. It's actually slightly bullish. It's out there a ways. It just shows that there's a long-term optimism in the price of oil. Uh, also PXD, as you look at op today's option time and sales, you'll see again, a May 2260 call, 160 call bought, a Jan 150 call sold. What does that mean? We're basically rolling out from the January timeframe. We're just rolling it out to where? You'll see that's less than the open interest. We're rolling it out to May. So again, what do we have here? And into a spread, a 160, 200. So again, while not bullish, it is somewhat of a vote of confidence that they're not expecting these stocks to drop a lot. Yes, they're extending the time frame. Yes, they're going from a long call to a spread. But again, it shows like 200 is still an expectation by next May. So again, we're not probably done in terms of oil, but for right now, certainly looks like we're going in hibernation as the curve is flattening a little bit. The optimism for a January move or, or such is kind of wilting. We're seeing that get pushed out into May and January 2023. So it makes sense. Energy is the worst performer today as many of the cyclical names, including financials. Well, why is financials? What, what's, why is the shine coming off financials? All you got to do is look at yields. Yields today were down. They were down on Friday as well, down nicely. This does not play, play within the context of a rising uh, yield curve, right? Where you're seeing 30-year yields rise, you know, 10-year, and the difference between the two, the two-year, the five-year, the 10-year, the 30-year widening out. That's not exactly happening. As you look at TYX, 30-year, for example, and not down quite as much in terms of yield. So it did steepen a little bit today, but the strength in treasuries certainly is causing financials to maybe take a little bit of profits here. So if we look at... Uh, um, so if we look at financials, you'll see we're kind of coming off. Now, we did finish towards the high of the session as treasuries began to weaken and we came off our lows in terms of yield. We did see some strength come in into the financial space. And this is one we talked about last week that was looking, you know, looking at a very two weeks ago, looking at a strong possibility of a rally here. You know, maybe if yields start to back the truck up and we start to see the 10 year TNX rise. You know, maybe that it does open the door for financials, especially with the S&P and the Dow hitting new all-time highs. Again, that would be a nice catalyst if financials could go with it. But remember, just like two weeks ago, key off of treasury yields, that will determine where the market's going more broadly. Um, as we look at the VIX, you know, the VIX today, you know, ultimately did finish higher. I mean, so on a day where the market rallied to a new all-time high, the S&P, for example, uh, the VIX was also higher. Again, this happy, you know, doesn't happen all that often, but it shows there is some expectation for some volatility moving forward this week. And again, so that's something to consider. So the VIX is sitting at 16 right now. Um, if you look at uh, um, the SKU, um, we won't have the update for today, but you definitely saw on Friday the SKU tick up to like a, one, a 160 level, which is very, very high. And what this is reflecting is, yes, there might be a little bit of upside here in the market, it just doesn't compare to the potential downside risk. So it makes sense to kind of be long and find some opportunities to, to, to be long or sell premium. But the reality is there's that downside. So you got to be prepared in terms of hedging and, and, and then the like. So as we look at the VIX3M plus VIX ratio, um, so again, bringing the pairs ratio, we were at a very, very high threshold, over 130 on Friday. Because the VIX is rising today, we're seeing it come down. We're still at 128. Anything over 120 is, is fairly high. It just shows the market just continues to expect to see what? Some volatility. They're just not getting it. And that's what makes it so difficult when you go back to the S&P. You look at the market more generally. You know How much more does this have? Who knows? 450, maybe 455. But all it does is just open up further the potential downside risk to the market. Um, so again, just be, you know, be prepared. This is, a, this is a very difficult market. You know, again, we see financials and we rotate. Now we're back. Maybe financials rallies again. Um, utilities again has had a very, very nice run. They've really led the S and P for the most part, a 0.6% today. The S and P is a lamp a quarter percent. So again, this is more of a defensive posturing, uh, right now in the market. Um, one, one utilities company that did see or catch some, uh, um, bullish interest today 
It did fade. It didn't quite participate. This is actually on Friday, actually, on VST. VST is one where we saw similar activity pop up back here in late May. It's one that lags the utility space and one with which, you know, we're kind of looking to see maybe getting to, to 20 bucks. So that was a SEP 20 that was, was bought on Friday. Again, fading back today. But again, it's one to watch. If we can maybe trade through today's high, could give an indication we're starting to bounce. We have a chance to carry to 20. Uh, surprisingly, Apple today. So Apple um, had a very, very volatile session to kind of kick things off. Um, down, then up, then we rallied and finished at the high of the session. This is a stock that did have some very nice activity today. Uh, specifically, if we look at the 27 August, uh, scroll up here a little bit, 27 August, um, 152.50. You'll see we finished out in 90, almost 90,000 contracts. A lot of that probably buying and selling in there. But what you saw just really kind of kick things off for today's trading session, you saw a lot of bullish upside activity come in right off the bat. So look right here, for example, 10,000 contracts, trade in a minute, that was 739. As we look at a one day, one minute on the S&P, let me just minimize the sidebar here. You'll notice at this exact same time, if we kind of scroll back here a little bit, right there at 739, 2 million shares, pretty much mostly bought, right? As the price was going up significantly and we kind of eventually kind of petered out here as the buying spree off the open. But what happened is we faded throughout the course of the day. We did find ourselves rallying and finishing at a new high. And again, that activity as I talked about earlier in my session today was something that did reflect some bullish sentiment in Apple. So if we go back to the, uh, the one year daily chart, what you'll see is that again, we have this little triangle formation. We broke out last Thursday, held on Friday. Now we're continuing up today. As you look at the potential range, 141 to about 150, we're talking about $9 off the break, 147. You know, can we get to 156? Absolutely. Can we get to 160? It's a very real possibility. But we're seeing just that continued interest in Apple and really help kind of set the tone right off the bat today, despite the intraday weakness in Apple shares. Another stock that's just continuing to see some, some bullishness is Sonos. Uh, oops. <laughs> they actually uh, won a, uh, let's try this again. They actually won a, uh, um, a patent win against Google, for example. Uh, the stock did gap and kind of fall back today. But this is one that we saw bullish activity last Tuesday. We got the upgrade on Thursday. The breakout we held there gapped up early this morning as we saw the, uh, um, uh, the uh, AUG 42s come in, and again, we traded 242, then backed off it. This is one that, again, you know, we've certainly faded. We didn't finish strong. We could pull back here. This is one to watch this week for some volatile trading sessions. There's a lot of trading going on right now uh, in Sonos, and so it could create some potential for volatility. Uh, on the bearish side, you had your ARCs, for example, um, ARC, double K. <laughs> um, as we look at it in zero and a little more closely, uh, we did fade. We did break a little support today. We didn't finish at our lows. We have some support down there at about 113. Uh, but the volume was a bit higher today in ARC. And uh, where it was occurring was this, it was a SEP 104, AUG 20, uh, 27 AUG 115 roll. In essence, what happened is the uh, 27 August got rolled down from a 115 uh, to a September expiration, and uh, it got rolled down to the 104 strike right there. And so what does it do? It's basically opening up a little bit of profiting, but we're kind of opening up that downside here uh, to the 104, which is about the area of uh, the May lows. So again, we're kind of looking for, for ARC possibly uh, rotating down there. Um, let me see what else we got here. We also have, uh, when you think about, you know, Micron, for example, Micron, very similar to ARC, had some bearish activity today. It was a uh, 27 AUG 67 put. So again, indication we may break support here. So we had heavy selling. We're holding the last couple of days. Indications are we may have a chance to break out. Look for trading through those lows to help trigger that. When you think about some of the uh, um, uh, semiconductor opportunities, uh, Taiwan certainly is the big, the, is the center of that. Uh, did finish lower today. It's at support. Um, certainly some of the news from China was not great. Um, but uh, but again, it was a SEP 58. So we're looking at the, the 58 coming down here. So again, these are some to watch. So if you start to trade through today's low as a trigger, you might see things get down here. So what could you use as a proxy here? Maybe a Taiwan semiconductor looking for it to break support or other shares that are in the semiconductor space, which we looked at Micron, for example. Um, also DRI. Um, 
This is Darden Restaurants. Again, rolled over today. We did finish off our lows. It's always a little bit risky sometimes taking some bearish plays, but if you get the balance right, you know, throwing a couple bearish and some bullish, uh, for example, um, it does help even out a little bit. But this was an at the money day. It was an AUG 140. But again, it's just, you know, Darden Restaurants with the COVID variant, you know, picking up again. Interesting to see what happens with Darden moving forward. Um, but again, uh, one to watch for some potential volatility and some downside price action. Uh, we're going to wrap it up here with Starbucks, SBUX. Uh, Starbucks, you know, does, you know, Don kind of looks at Starbucks as being more of a defensive play. And I find it's interesting. We're kind of coming down here. We're taking that kind of contrarian uh, defense. There was some bullish activity in Nova 120. Not super exciting here, but it is an indication. Maybe we're going to find some support. We're looking for a rally towards maybe 123.50 as some upside opportunity. Anyway, folks, well, that's today's uh, uh, Theo Knight video. Uh, pleasure being with you today. We'll catch you back next Monday.